Triforce of Doom here, and time to flash back to my high school years because with the final season of MLP being over, I want to show my love for what made up 70% of my YouTube watch history when working on assignments. The fan songs. And with how much of them I listen to, I feel like a top 10 is too small. So we're gonna make this a top 15 instead! The main rules are, as the title implies, the songs cannot be from the actual show, and I'm keeping it to two per artist max. Collabs are a bit of a gray area, but I'm gonna try to keep those in check too. Trust me, there are certain artists who I consider my absolute favorites, so they would be a majority of the list if I didn't put this rule in place. With that said, grab the cupcakes and fire the party cannons, it's time for this channel's Nightmare Night! Yo, it's me! To start off the list, we're going for a rap that, if it weren't for the explicit lyrics, I would have definitely tried to do for the talent show at my school. And I mean, there should be no reason why I'm fucking this up. I have the lyrics right in front of me. I'm come just on, really on, good on, at singing. No, <sighs> let's just record it. Try and record it one more time. Yeah, fine, fine. With instrumentals by Jackal App and vocals by both him and Mike the Microphone, this song just kicks ass. The melody Jackal App went for with the background beat is a great intensity with the industrial sound, and I love the way Mike's verses just punch you in the face with the lyrics, not giving a single shit what others think. The chorus that Jackal App does oh, is also a nice bit of cooldown with how mellow he makes the melody here. Overall, One Trick Pony is a great rap that makes for a nice start to this list. This next song is a great combo of a motivational song and a kick-ass theme for one of my favorite secondary characters. Don't look back, it's too late to turn back now. Push through, daring do, you're gonna make it out alive. This time, you won't let the danger overcome you. From the trio that decided to dub themselves Triple Threat for this project, Aviators, Denotive, and Yelling at Cats brought their A game for a song all about daring do that just pumps me up. The lyrics basically make all three singers sound like her hype man, which is pretty fitting for the MLP take on the Indiana Jones type character, and combine that with a cool techno like track and it's quite the recipe. I also just kind of find it funny how Yelling at Cats basically takes the role of kick-ass guest rap verse, complete with a funny ad-lib when the beat cuts. Where'd the beat go? Uh, oh. Great simple track that I just love to death. Now, I've made it no secret on this channel that I have a love for techno and its related genres. So it should be absolutely no surprise to those who aren't new to the channel that Discord, basically the most iconic brony song, would be on here. However, it's probably not the version you guys were expecting. What if I told you this is the third time Eurobeat Brony has made his magnum opus? While many fans, including myself, first found out about the song Discord via the Living Tombstone remix, after listening to both that one and the 2019 version back-to-back, -back, 
this version won. When the song starts with a Castlevania vibe before heading into Eurobeat's signature techno style with the lyrics, this version really makes the song its own. Add in how each part feels unique in its own way, including paying homage to Tombstone's own version during the solo, and I can't help but love this version to death. Eurobeat adding in a prelude that is the perfect way to introduce a new remix to a song about the Lord of Chaos, complete with ending the prelude with his iconic line, is also a nice touch. If you haven't yet, give the full remix a listen. It's great. Okay, what is it with a good chunk of my nostalgia picks having rap in them? You try your best, but it's not quite there. Got mic on the mic, we wreck the scene, got bulls back in the track, war machine causing havoc and chaos. Yeah, come to try and stop it when you see just who you're messing with. These boys are repping 2010. We got plays on the track to get this party started. The living true story we mix, and he's gonna put his heart in to what he's making. So step back, we about to share. You try your best, but it's not quite there. With vocals by Wooden Toaster, aka Glaze, Remixed track by Living Tombstone, and rap by Mike the Microphone, this song is intense and I love every second of it. The song itself is about background pony Carrot Top, in a sort of AU where she essentially gets Salem Witch Trial because her gardening abilities, in a point in time where it's hard to grow food, are insane and scare everybody else. It's actually kind of dark with the story. As for the music portion, everything works beautifully. Mike's raps using Glaze's original lyrics as the hook slash chorus is beautiful, and TLT adds a nice bit of intensity with his remix. Also, fun fact for those wondering, Glaze's original version was called Beyond Her Garden. Tombstone changed the title to reflect how he was remixing it, and Mike actually used the new title as part of his lyrics. <laughs> Can someone call in mod? Because it's time to rock! Ah, <laughs> L-Train, your rock instrumentals never cease to amaze, and the fact that he brought in Cyril the Wolf, who I now have in my memory as a great thrash metal singer after finding this song, makes this one hell of a Rainbow Dash theme. This song seriously wouldn't sound out of place in an old school metal album, and I love every second of it. The song itself is basically essence of RD in metal form, so there's not a lot of complex things to dissect theme-wise. It's just a kick-ass song about one of the more intense members of the main six that hits my metal need just right. <laughs> So while I didn't go for the Tombstone remix of a Eurobeat song everyone was expecting, that doesn't mean I didn't go for any of them. For a thousand years I wait. While I do love the party vibe Eurobeat tends to go for in his songs, Tombstone's rock techno remix of Luna just kicks too much ass. From the guitar and drums during the instrumental solo, to the way the whole remix just starts off by punching you in the face with the drum roll. While it can feel a little short at times with how the lyrics to solo ratio is basically 50-50, I will always love this remix. Oh, look at that! Both Tombstone songs are back to back. This time, it's one of his originals. They took me out of my house, now I have a new home. I got the pills like a good girl, and I got a new Yeah, this is a straight up rock song with no techno, just goes to show Tombstone's abilities. As for the actual quality of the song, 
The lyrics can actually hit pretty hard since they are sung from the perspective of the pony that the fandom calls Screw Loose, aka that one patient from Read It and Weep who acts like a dog and, in the song, is just really confused on why she's there. The vocals done by Dasha definitely help with having it hit home too. The guitar and drums also give a nice melody and tempo that helps show how sad she is. It's a really good rock song that I actually consider my favorite MLP song by Tombstone, and, based on the comments, many consider it their actual favorite even with his non-pony stuff, and I don't blame them. Time for the Gabriel Brown, aka Black Griffin Block. An artist so good, he actually got to do backup vocals in some canon songs later. As for the lower of the two choices, hi CMC! <laughs> So this song has Gabe singing to the Crusaders pre-cutie marks about how well they may not have them yet, it's only a matter of time and that they just need a push in the right direction. A great take on the central lesson the CMC learn in the first half of the show, and it's pretty high energy and very motivational. The mix of guitar and electronic also makes it unique and fits the vocals really well. And considering his brother Basic helps with instrumentals throughout the whole album, of course it's coordinated well. It's easily my favorite song throughout all of Immortal. As for the follow-up album... So, if you know my music tastes, you know I love a good villain song. Two of my top three in my Ruby list, and even my theme song are villain songs. So leave it to Gabe, with help from Michelle Kreber, voice of Apple Bloom, and his brother Basic, to make a kick-ass song for the three most famous villains of Gen 4. My return is a mystery, thought you had control of me. I'm offended that you're so surprised. That first defeat was a practice round, but I pulled myself off the ground. And I've already planned your demise. At the start of the album of the same name, Getting Stronger is a song sung from the perspective of King Sombra, Chrysalis, and T-Rex. Each being voiced by one of the three vocalists, it takes place after their first canonical defeats with them going to better be ready, because this is far from over. Which is pretty prophetic for an album from 2016 since all three villains come back for season 9. The techno track is just the right mix of foreboding and energetic to make it fit the artist's style, and I can totally see it playing during a fight scene. And while they also made a remix to bookend the album, to me, nothing could beat the bass version. Great revenge themed song for some great villains. <laughs> Remember that Rainbow Dash song from earlier? It was part of a six song series where l Train collabed with a different person for each of the main six. And how fitting that my favorite of them is centered around Best Pony, Rarity. Bet you weren't expecting a song about everyone's favorite fashion marshmallow to be in the style of Russian metal band Rammstein, were you? Because Eltrain's metal skills really show with how he uses a style with Elias Frost's vocals. From the slow but methodical build-up of the verses to the intense chorus. The lyrics are also chilling with a great showcase of some of the fallings someone can hit in an industry like fashion. Also, the guitar solo is fucking awesome. I could listen to this song over and over and never get sick of it. Definitely one of Eltrain's best works, if not his best. And now.
now for the somber yet intensive melodies of my favorite artist I found through this fandom. I give you Aviators. I watch them change before my eyes. Destinies rearranged to my surprise. I tried so hard to make amends, but my mistake has separated my friends. Aside from Living Tombstone, this artist was the big reason I put a cap on the per artist quota. I didn't really mention how much I love his work back in Never Back Down because that was a three year way project I just considered a group effort. But now that we're on the first solo song of his, holy shit I love this! Open Your Eyes takes place during Magical Mystery Cure, where Twilight is trying to get everyone's memories and cutie marks back to normal. It is basically showing all of Twilight's thought process and how desperate she is to fix her mistake. The instrumentals also do a great job at amplifying the vocals with the subdued mix of drums, guitar, and keyboard. An amazing composition. Just so happens that the next four are somehow more awesome. <laughs> Okay, while most of these songs have been about the characters, there had to be at least one song about the impact the fandom had, and holy shit did Prince Whatever -er deliver on that front. For as the song itself says, I really gotta thank Golden Fox's video on fan songs for having me rediscover this guy. I used to listen to Prince Whatever's Nightmare Moon song, The Fight Inside, but somehow forgot about it until I rediscovered his channel. And that video also showed me this song. Solidarity is a song all about the fandom and how it stayed strong through thick and thin. The instrumental is a great mix of intense and hopeful, and the lyrics do a great job showcasing the fire this show lit in many a fan. In fact, the visuals you're seeing are from the gigantic collab animation he did for the anniversary shortly before the last episode aired. Part of making this video was me showing how I still find the fandom going strong, and as the last lyrics of the song says, I'm not going anywhere, I'm dying with the herd. Pretty much the only reason this song isn't higher is I just found the compositions of the next three songs to hit me hard. Starting with the one song of Prince Whatever's that could beat this one. So this next song is based off of the moment that made me fully jump on the show. Twilight vs. T-Rex in song form, everybody. I see you running through the crowds of ponies past the edge of town. The song itself is a combo perspective of both Twilight and all the ponies rooting for her, although mostly Twilight, as she goes to fight T-Rex during the climax of Twilight's Kingdom. And holy shit, does it match the tone of that fight scene. The instrumental is an epic metal track that knows when to lower its intensity, and the lyrics just kick ass with lines like Look to the Sky Celestia, Pray to the Moon Princess Luna, or the verse from guest Milky Moo as Twilight ending with This is my final letter. This song just hits all the right notes for me for a metal song, and I instantly knew it would be on my list the second I heard the guitar kick in. As for the last two songs... Featuring guitar from Bronified, we have my favorite Aviators track, Heroes. This song is on the higher end of his energy spectrum, and it works! The song is about all the development the main six have gone through into becoming the protectors of Equestria, and how they will push through all obstacles. You can feel the optimistic energy in both the guitar and vocals. I could see this being the song that plays during a final battle scene or for an RPG final boss. 
I just love how epic it is. Probably helps that I'm an optimist by nature, so I'm just naturally drawn to songs like this. Not much else to say, Heroes just kicks all sorts of ass. <laughs> When I was ordering this list, I immediately knew what song was going to be number one. Because it's been in that spot ever since the first time I heard it five years ago, and it can still make me cry. It's no epic rock ballad or intense techno track. This is a lullaby. This song. This song was one of the first bits of exposure I had to the music side of the fandom. And holy crap. Lullaby for a Princess hits my emotions hard. As someone with siblings, Celestia having to lock away Luna for all those years was something I low-key dreaded seeing expansion of in the show proper because I knew it would hurt. And this song is a great showing of how. It's just Celestia singing a song about how she regretted not listening more and having to resort to that method, but this song pulls it off perfectly. From the somber piano to the vocalist Christina's insanely good performance, Pony Phonics' magnum opus will forever stand in my memory, and still makes me cry just from remembering it exists. And this was a song made back when the show was only two seasons in. Having gotten into the fandom two years after that, five years of being able to give me the same emotional punch says a lot. This has been the Triforce of Doom. Peace out. She's smart.